the name of the Lord is so powerful the name of the Lord is so awesome it is so awesome to the extent that whenever you read the New Testament you read of some people who were called scribes because in the old in the days of Jesus they didn't have the Bible like you have it now Maybe one of these days you hear me again on Bible study on Wednesday, I'll teach you how the New Testament books were brought together, how the old was brought together to form a Bible. But you see, the men who were called scribes had to write each book by hand. And whenever they came to the place of the name of the Lord, Yahweh, they removed the vowels. They felt it was too holy, too precious, too powerful for them to just write it like that. Not that alone. Whenever they wrote the Bible and they wrote the place where they wrote Yahweh, they even changed their clothes because they felt they needed to be naked in his presence. That his name is too awesome, too great, too powerful. Lift your hand and bless the name of the Lord this morning. Magnify the name of the Lord. His name is powerful. His name is awesome. His name is glorious. His name is powerful. Come and bless his name. Magnify the name of the Lord. Name above all name. Healing name. Precious name. Salvation. Deliverer. He's what his name is. Yahweh. Yahweh. Yahweh, Yahweh, his name is powerful, his name is glorious, Yahweh, Yahweh, oh Yahweh, Yahweh. Yahweh, oh Yahweh, Yahweh. We bless you this morning, Lord. We magnify you this morning, Lord. We make great your name this morning, Lord. Your name is above all names. Your name is healing. Your name is powerful. Precious name, oh how sweet, hope of earth and joy of heaven, precious name, oh how sweet, hope of earth and joy of heaven, amen. Wonderful, glorious Jesus, the Lamb for sinners slain, author of our salvation, how powerful is your name. Wonderful, glorious, wonderful, glorious Jesus, the Lamb for sinners slain. Jesus is so good. 
brings healing, he brings deliverance. May you be blessed by the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Reach out and welcome 10 of people this morning. Tell them they look so beautiful. The name of Jesus is so good. I love to call it every day. It sounds like music to my soul. The sweetest name I've ever known. Thank you very much. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. Welcome to this morning's service. I know you are already blessed. You are already highly favored. And this morning, may the word of the Lord encourage you. May it strengthen you, bless you, open you to greater grace, greater favor. In the name of Jesus, we welcome also those who are joining online. May they be blessed and highly favored. And may I ask you to please probably send the link to this morning's service to somebody so that wherever they are, they also connect because the word of the Lord or somebody today is going to bless them in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout amen. amen. If you have your Bibles, please open to the book of Mark. Mark chapter 3. We're reading verses 1 to 5. Mark chapter 3, verses 1 to 5. Mark chapter 3, verses 1 to 5. And he entered the synagogue again. And the man was there who had a withered hand. So they watched him closely, whether he would heal him on the Sabbath, so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man who had the withered hand, step forward. Then he said to them, is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil? Is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil, to save life or to kill? But they kept silent. And when he had looked around at them with anger, being grieved by the hardness of their hearts, he said to the man, stretch out your hand. And he stretched it out. And his hand was restored as whole as the other. May God bless his word. This morning, I believe I have a word from the Lord for somebody. I came to let you know that you can have it if you are willing to stretch for it. Is somebody ready to stretch for what they will be blessed for? Somebody say, I'm ready for it. Tell your neighbor, stretch for it. Say it like you mean it, stretch for it. Say it louder, stretch for it. So this morning, somebody is stretching for favor. Someone is stretching for blessing. Someone is stretching for breakthrough. In the name of Jesus, everything God has for you is coming into your hand. Whatever had bound you must let you go. I declare and decree you will be set free. Sometimes life can be very funny. We are bound by people's prejudices. And if we allow it, we stay in the cocoon of their prejudice. Sometimes we are bound by religion. Or we are bound by traditions and philosophies of other people. We are bound by limitations of past experiences. But this morning you will be free. Sometimes we are bound by the fear of failure and the fear of man. Our own insecurities and personal doubts. But this morning you will be free. You must be ready to stretch for it. Stretch for your favor. Stretch for your blessing. Stretch for your breakthrough. Stretch for your testimony in the name of Jesus. I declare and decree no one will be able to stop you. Where God is taking you, you will get there. I say you will get there. Someone is going to be free this morning. Someone is coming out of what has held them down. The devil said you will not go anywhere, but God said you are going forward. God said you are entering a new blessing, a new season, a new testimony. In the name of Jesus. The people, the scriptures which we read tells us of a man. The Bible says was there who had a withered hand. They watched him closely whether he will heal, whether Jesus will heal him on the Sabbath. So that they might accuse Jesus. Interesting. Religion can be binding. Religion makes people to do crazy things. Religion makes people to do foolish things. 
Christianity is not a religion because in religion you just obey a system. In Christianity we come into a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. And so when Jesus came and was to heal this man, the religious people were more interested in the day of the week, not the healing of the man. There are some people who are more interested in systems than you. They are more interested in programs than you. They are more interested in what is being messed up if they do things outside of the regular. But uh, this morning I came to tell you, when God is ready to bless you, he will not consult with anybody. When God is ready to lift you up, people's opinion will not stop the blessing. When God is ready to touch your life, heal you, bring ministry to you. Those who stood up to oppose you, God will silence them. Shout amen. amen. But listen, you must be ready to stretch for your blessing. Stretch for your favor. Get out of your little comfort zone. You, need to, you must be ready to stretch and not say, this is how far my father went. Somebody's going beyond all the boundaries they've known. You have to stretch beyond even the people you know. Let me tell somebody this morning, the things you are that you have around you, you were not born that way, you will stretch. You were not born with addiction, you will stretch. You were not born with prejudices, the word prejudice means you were prejudged. Somebody had prejudged you, but you will surprise them. Oh, come and say a better amen. You will shock them. You will open your mouth and you will speak wisdom. You will take steps of wisdom. You were not born with limitations. You are stretching beyond it. You were not born with something some people want to paint you with. You will stretch beyond it. You were not born with some disease, some deformity. You will stretch beyond it. You will break out of it. The blood of Jesus will speak for you. The Bible says the blood of Jesus speaks better things than the blood of Abel. So when you find yourself in something that wants to hold you for life, you need to also realize you need a power beyond what is trying to hold you for you to break out. This morning, you are breaking out of limitation. You are breaking into a new season. You are breaking into favor. I pray for somebody today. To the levels you've never been, you are stretching. To the territories you've never entered, you are stretching. For the healing of your heart, you are stretching. For the healing of your mind, you are stretching. You are entering new places in the name of Jesus. Sometimes the devil will tell you this is the way you are. You can't change it. That's just the way you are. You just have to accept it. Uh, you, this is your limitation in life. No, this morning... I'm not a motivational speaker. I am your pastor. I carry grace. There's an anointing on my life. So when I make a decree and declaration, what holds you down must let you go. I said what holds you down must let you go. I said you are not born for, with depression, so be free in Jesus' name. You are not born with a spirit of anger. A spirit of anger. Ah! This morning you are stretching beyond it. You're not born with discouragement. You're stretching beyond it. You're not born with fearfulness and loneliness. You're stretching beyond it. You're not born with fullness of doubts and dreads. You're stretching beyond it. You're not born with a broken heart. You're stretching beyond it. You're not born with aborted dreams and lost visions. Your dream will come to pass. Your vision will become reality. You are not born with a history of disappointments and failures. The devil is trying to tell you, just accept it. That's the way it is. No, 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 no. I came this morning to let you know, whatever withered area of your life it is, you are stretching. You are doing new things. You are going places. You are achieving things. You are breaking grounds. In the name of Jesus, every area of your life that have withered up, things will begin to work. Your expectation will become your reality. It will become what your eyes will see, what your hands will handle, what your mouth will testify. Shout amen three times. Jesus came to the temple. He looked at this man. He saw a man that he saw more than just a withered hand. He saw a withered life. 
Because if you want to play it back, remember this man, maybe when he was born, he was born with his withered hand. There are many things he wanted to do, but he could never do. There are many places he wanted to go, he could never go. Maybe in childhood, couldn't play with his friends, couldn't hang out, couldn't climb trees with them. Now he meets with Jesus. He's full of anger and frustration at the things that life had thrown at him. And when Jesus shows up to heal him, somebody is not happy. He said, nah, you want to heal on Saturday? Who cares if it is Wednesday? And somebody is offended. Do you know there are people who are offended by your blessing? They do not want to hear good news about you. The Bible says it offended Sambalat that somebody had come to look for the welfare of Israel. This morning, I speak into your life. Whether they like it or not, they will hear good news about you. And the next news about you that will go out will be news of testimonies, of healings and breakthroughs. Every withered area of your life is stretching. Withered mind stretching. Withered spirit stretching. Withered faith stretching. Disappointments, broken dreams, you are coming out of them. Shout amen with power. Jesus looked at the man. He saw how the man may have tried and failed. How the man may have just said, I'll just accommodate the situation I am in. But this morning, I'd lay hand on somebody and I declare that even the limitations you've accepted, you are coming out of it. You are stretching beyond it. Stretching beyond where you are. Don't accept and say, well, we've prayed, we've fasted, nothing changed. Maybe we are over ambitious. No, 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 no. Your time and season is here. Weeping may be for a night. Joy is coming in the morning. I pray for somebody, your season has come. The hour for the fulfillment of the dream and the vision is here. You will arise and have mercy on Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time. Someone say set time. Say it again, set time. I say it again, say set time. When your set time come and people oppose it shall still come to pass. They stand against you, it will come to pass. The whole of the pharisaical system stood against one man. They were so angry that Jesus was going to heal the man. But the man's day had come. Yeshua had stepped in because you see for us, we just say Jesus. But for them, when they say Yeshua, it means, because that's the Hebrew way to say his name. When they say Yeshua, it's not just the name, it's, you are saying Savior has come. You know, it's like, uh, the name is not just a name. His name is like ointment poured forth. Hallelujah. When this, so when the man heard that Yeshua had come, he thought to him, ah, my day has come. My salvation has come. Then some people were blocking him. I said, no, no, on Sabbath day, he must not do healing. You know, and when God is ready to prove himself in your life, you've got to realize that it is your part to stretch. So this morning, Beyond the boundaries drawn for you, you are stretching. Beyond the limitations they've placed on you, you are stretching. I said you are stretching. In the name of Jesus, you are stretching. Shout, I'm stretching. Then Jesus said to him, stretch forth the hand. And, 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 and when Jesus said it, I'm sure Jesus must have been saying to himself, I know it's going to be hard, but stretch. Some of us, we need to stretch. Stretch your mind, stretch your thinking, stretch your faith. Teach your children to stretch. You can't let your children know. You can't be what you want to be and sit down in front of television every day. Stretch by shutting down that thing for a week. Stretch. Praise the Lord. Stretch. I know it's going to be hard. Stretch. I know it takes some effort, but stretch. I know you're going to have to push past some bad experiences, but stretch. Because some of us, because you've had an embarrassing moment before, you don't want to stretch. And you say, oh no, what will people say? Hey, listen, if you don't stretch, they will say. If you stretch, they will say. You better stretch and let them say. Praise God. Praise the Lord. You know, if you are big, they'll say you are big. If you are thin, they'll say you are thin. If you are regular, they say you are regular. Do something. Be happy with yourself. Stretch for your breakthrough. Stretch for your testimony. Hallelujah. There may be some pain, but stretch. 
there may be some dropping of old friends but stretch there may be some cost to it because stretching will be costly but stretch you may have to a man whose hands is withered means that the the nervous system is not working and now when jesus says stretch i'm not a doctor but the brain and the hand have to work together for the hand to stretch because every time i stretch my hand it was my brain that gave command for my hand to stretch so when jesus said stretch the brain and the hand have to agree together. That's when people have their nerves totally destroyed. The brain is giving the command, but the hand is not working. But on this occasion, the supernatural is speaking. Jesus the same himself has spoken. Power has left him, hit the man's body. So the body and the brain have to agree together. Stretch! And the man stretched his hand. Well, I pray for you today. When everybody think there's no way for you, I speak into your life that there'll be a way out. The one who calls you will make a way. As you stretch, there'll be miracles. There'll be testimonies. There will be healing. There'll be deliverance. It may be discomforting, but you will stretch. It may upset some friends, but you will stretch. Tell your neighbor, upset them, upset them, upset them. Because look at me, there's a level of stretching and some people cannot be your friends anymore because you talk another language. You think differently. Your dreams are not their dreams. They just want to sit and be telling the same old story of old boys association, the same village people's association, but you have moved on. Your dreams are bigger. You are talking of the last time you were in Austria. What happened when you were there? The other day when you were in New York, what you saw at so and so place. And when you were in Kigali, I was just in Kigali and prayed on Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, what you saw there and they're thinking, big deal. We don't have to go anywhere. We are somebody. Move away from those kind of people. They are jealous. They are mean. They want you to be withered. They want you to stay where they are. They are local champions. If you are going to be global, you got to move away from them. Somebody scream, stretch. Say it again, stretch. If you notice, some of the people you really, really respect who are at some certain level of leadership, at the upper echelon of leadership, you don't see many people around them. Because they have so stretched, they've dropped some excess baggage. If everyone is hanging around you, it means you are too available. You also need to join the video. I'm not available. They know they see me. You got to stretch. Somebody says stretch. stretch. Stretch your spirit man. Stretch your destiny. Stretch your prayer life. Stretch your vision. Don't dream small dreams. All you've been doing is over cleaning the same apartment. You say, ah, this house that I bought. And it's not even yours. It's a mortgage house that you are serving for 25 years. And you think that's all what God wants to do in your life. When you are so gifted, you're so anointed, you have giftings, but you don't want to stretch. You just want to be in one little place. Now you say, I don't like stress. Stress and stretch. Stress and stretch. You are not a, there's only one animal that doesn't want to do anything. It stays on the same spot, picks the leaves around it, and sleep again. What animal is that? The S-L-O-T-H, the sloth. Stays on the same spot, doesn't want to stress. In fact, God knew that it's lazy. So God gave it all it needed. Put some kind of chemicals inside it that deals with even the worst leaves. No matter how toxic the leaf is, the sloth will eat it and still he will get his own benefit. Because he's a lazy man. He doesn't want to walk. He just stays where he is. That's not you. Your destiny is too big. And if somebody is threatened by your destiny, they have not seen anything. Somebody scream, stretch. Say it again, stretch. It may upset some people, but stretch. Some people will turn their back on you, but stretch. The whole religious system, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, including the priests, 
wanted the man not to be healed on this Sabbath day. But the man was ready to listen to Jesus. Glory to God. You don't listen to somebody else. You listen to the Lord. If he tells you to stretch, you just go do what he says to do. And from today, your life, your life is changing. Your story is changing. Praise the Lord. You don't listen to anyone. You don't, you don't go on the internet. Somebody's abusing Jesus. Uh, it's not the only way. There are other ways. You don't listen to those ones. You look for what the word says. You believe the word. The word will work for you. I pray for you today as you stretch. You will be blessed. I said you will be blessed. You will be highly favored. You will never be the same. In the mighty name of Jesus. Shout amen with power. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. The Pharisees stood. They are ready to condemn the man. But the man, he knew where to go. I must tell Jesus all of my troubles. I must tell Jesus all of my pain. I must tell Jesus all of my troubles. Jesus can help me. Jesus alone. I must tell Jesus. I must tell Jesus. Jesus can help me. Jesus alone. Listen, there are people who like you the way you are. They are using you as a signpost. They say, oh, you don't know that sister. She's always wearing the devil is a liar. Next time they'll see you, you are on another level. God is stretching your faith, stretching your dream, stretching your destiny. You are looking beautiful. You are breaking barriers. You are going where your fathers never went, where your mothers never went. You are entering new season. You are doing the unusual. You are achieving the unusual. You are breaking the barriers. They put a line. I said, nobody from your lineage has crossed this way. Oh, you will leave that line behind. Somebody scream, I'm stretching. Say it again, I'm stretching. Part of your stretching is to separate from the crowd. Everybody cannot go where God is taking you. Everybody don't want to go where God is taking you. The Bible teaches very clear. Don't follow the crowd. Follow the cloud. The cloud of glory is what you should follow. Not the crowd of the people. The Bible says in the Old Testament, every time the cloud moved, the people quickly packed their bag and followed the cloud. Follow the cloud of glory, not the crowd of people. Because the people can get you wrong. But when you stretch, you come into your blessing. When you stretch, you come into your glory. When you stretch, you come into your testimony. Receive in the name of Jesus. The Bible says the man had a withered hand. Withered hand stands for all they cannot do that religion have told you. All they cannot do that is in opposition to your dream. All they cannot do that is opposing to your vision, your desire. All that life is telling you you will never achieve. Oh, don't dream those big dreams. You don't have enough money. Oh, don't dream those big dreams. You don't have enough education. Oh, don't dream those, dream, those big dreams. You are, you are too young to achieve them. Oh, those don't dream those dreams. Dream. You are now too old to make them happen. Oh, don't dream those, those dreams. You don't have enough faith. But I came to let you know what you don't have is not comparable to what the Lord has. You are coming into your favor. You are coming into your blessing. What they say you can't do, you will do. You will even exceed it. In the name of Jesus, this morning, based on this message, somebody is getting ready to break loose. Oh, I didn't hear your amen. This morning, somebody is getting ready to stretch to a new level. Somebody is getting ready. Their mind is being stretched. Their faith is being stretched. They are breaking into new levels. What you had today will shatter the power of the enemy. Shout amen three times. I say you shouldn't come to a church like KRCC and you just came to hear Pastor Matthew every day. You hear me every day. And some people will just hear once and they take the same thing you heard several times. They went and operated with it and their lives changed. Met a young man too, last year, January or somewhere, or February. And he told me his story. He said, I was speaking, I mean, we had organized a finance seminar in KRCC, Nigeria. And we made it open. About 3,000 people showed. I just did one yesterday for some group of people. There were 10,000 people there. 10,000. 
So this one we organized 3,000 shows. And I began to teach how to create wealth. The young man said he was so messed up in his head that when he got back home, their father had left them a house in some kind of ghetto part of Lagos called Ajegule. The house, you have to go through people's backyard to get to your father's house. There's no road to your father's house. You have to go through people's back house. I say, hey, hi, sorry, we're going to our house. But he heard me teach. And when he got home, he told his brothers, we're selling this house. They went, they were up in arms. What are you talking about? He said, I just went to hear a preacher who said, we can use what we have to create what we don't have. Let's sell this house. Let's take the money and go where the city is growing towards and buy a piece of land. Sit on it for a few years. The value will rise. Wow. His brothers initially fought him, but by morning they came to him, agreed with him. They sold the house, took the money, they bought a piece of land. And by the time I'm meeting him last year, he had gone beyond that. He has become a realtor who is helping people to buy property or to sell. Not only that, he had been given a vision to start a realtor group with 7,000 members. 7,000 other realtors are in his system so that by this, he trains these 7,000, whatever thing they sell, if they made 5%, 1% comes to him, and so from his poverty, in fact, he said he had to borrow money to come to my seminar, and now he is a person who has 7,000 people who himself is empowering. Stretch! He didn't go to much school, but he stretched his mind. He believed in what this teacher spoke, what this man spoke, what this man said is possible. Today, I want you to know the same thing will happen to you. Your faith is stretching. Your dream is stretching. Your mind is stretching. Your destiny is stretching. Shout amen three times. Even the people who organized the one I was speaking in yesterday, they are very similar to the story I told you. They too, in a local church, there were two young men who were struggling. They became business partners, hardly able to do anything. Their pastor kept firing them up. Their pastor draws from Pastor Matthew. In fact, when you see his books, it copies even the color of the page of my books. And so they were fired up. And uh, one time I went to speak in their church, I linked them to sow a seed in their church. They did. And after that, boom, they broke into the world of being property developers, realtors, land buyers. These guys are one of the voices in that part of the world. Yesterday, there were 10,000 people there. About, about six to 7,000 of the people there are on their system. These guys have developments all over the place from nothing. It wasn't, they had, they had degrees like thermometer, but nothing was working. Nothing was working. But somebody was willing to stretch. Because you see, the problem with many of us is that we got a, a nice job, a good J-O-B. And your J-O-B is messing you up. Because your J-O-B keeps you J-O-B. Your J-O-B means just over broke. You're able to pay your mortgage and put food on the table, and you think that's all your life is. I want you to know your life is bigger than that. If you are willing to stretch, you are coming out of the box. You are stepping out. Somebody scream, I'm stepping out. Yeah. Say it like you mean it, I'm stepping out. Yeah. I don't know what happened. I didn't wait to hear. But this message I'm preaching, I preached it on Wednesday night in Kigali, Rwanda. 10,000 women in this stadium. Those women went wild. I don't know. I'm going to be hearing some crazy testimonies. Because it was like I put some people on fire. It was like I did what Samson did. Samson put fire to the tail of foxes. And those foxes went and set fire on the whole nation. So I pray for you today. May you stretch. Come out of your regular. Come out of limitation. Somebody have drawn the line for you. They say this is where you can operate. But you are bigger than it. Because they call you accountant. Don't mean that's where you should stay. Look for a problem and solve it. Look for a challenge and handle it.
stretch your faith stretch your dream stretch your prayer stretch your dream stretch what you see in the name of Jesus something will work for you oh somebody's hearing me this morning today is the poorest you will be today is the day when your limitations are broken you are coming out of limitation you are walking into a new season new level new dimension new grace new favor in the name of Jesus you were afraid to take a step before but from today as you take the step you will walk on waters you will walk on waters you will walk on waters you will bless your neighbor bless your generation touch lives make impact make impact in the name of jesus shout amen with power i came to tell you be stretched be loosed from human limitation so i say human limitation if somebody is not imposing it on you you are imposing it on yourself I want to, but I can't. There was a time Jesus came to one guy who was by the pool of Bethesda. Will you be made whole? And he imposed limitation on himself. He said, I have no man. Once you have philosophies at the back of your mind as to 10 ways to break through, number one, you have to have a man. You will not break through until you find the man. And if there was nobody, you stay there. So the man thought his breakthrough must come from somebody. He didn't know that. <laughs> this is Jesus asking you. And when Jesus comes, the tempter's power is broken. When Jesus comes, the demons fly away. He breaks the gloom. He fills the life with glory. All is well when Jesus comes to stay. One sat alone beside the highway begging his eyes were blind the light he could not see then Jesus came and filled his life his glory all is well when Jesus comes to stay you see sometimes we think I need people if, I, if nobody helps me I can't break through some of us all we need to do is even just get some serious CDs, messages of Pastor Matthew on finance. We used to have a park with 70 teachings I've done on finance in this church. I don't know if it's still there. Lock yourself up for one week and listen to these 70 messages. Not take a holiday and go and sit there in Mayoka and begin to complain that my water in Mayoka don't taste like any other water. if things don't work you'll be like one of those yobs who are protesting 99% of those yobs have no 2 levels 99% you look for somebody to blame for your failure but when you're willing to stretch you can go where they said you'll never go you can reach where they said you'll never reach you can enter where they said you'll never enter Am I preaching to someone this morning? And so barriers will be broken. Everything that was not challenged will be challenged by your life. She will enter new realms, new dimensions, new levels from today. Shout amen with power. I see somebody walking into a new season. I see things changing from today. Human limitations will not hold you. Religious limitation will not hold you. Demonic limitations will not hold you. Every limitation placed on you by your father's house is broken. The one they placed on you by your friends is broken. The one even the institution where you trained was placed on you is broken. The one you placed on yourself is broken. Because Jesus could heal the man, but he required that the man participate. He said, you have to do the stretching yourself. Somebody says, stretch, 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 stretch. No one can stretch for you. You got to do the stretching yourself. You see, the Bible makes clear that some things you got to carry yourself. And there are some things that can help you to carry. Galatians chapter 5, two scripture verses look contradictory, but they are not contradictory. In one verse, Paul says, every man shall bear 
his own burden. In the next verse, he says, bear ye one another's burden. They are not contradictory. You just need to know Greek. In the place where I say every man shall bear his own burden, the Greek word is for shion, from which we get portion. You carry your own portion. The second one where it says, bear you one another's burden, the Greek word is baros, which means a heavy load. You see the one which has to do with portion? I can't carry your portion for you. You got to carry your portion yourself. I can't love your wife on your behalf. If I do that, you should suspect me. I say, Pastor, this shaking, you are shaking my wife for the past five minutes. Enough is enough. Let the shaking be over. Stone me. There are valleys no one can walk for you. It's a country music that says, you got to walk that lonesome valley. You got to walk all by yourself. No one else can walk it for you. You got to walk it all by yourself. You got to walk lonesome valley. You got to walk all by yourself Cause no one else can walk it for you You got to walk it all by yourself Many men have walked that valley They had to walk all by themselves Cause no one else can walk it for them. They had to walk it all by themselves. You gotta walk that lonesome valley. You gotta walk all by yourself. No one else can walk it for you. You got to walk all by yourself. There are too many people transferring their responsibility. You need to stretch yourself. You need to stretch by yourself. You got to believe God for your breakthrough. You got to believe God for your favor. Jesus came to the man. Jesus can even, without asking the man to stretch, he could do it himself. But he needed the man to know, no breakthrough comes without your cooperation. If you're not willing to live your old habit, the same method of life you have lived since you were born, same bad habit, you are not ready to walk away from it. They told you this thing is killing you. It's not helping your health. You said, oh, leave me alone. I know somebody who ate sugar until they were 99. Keep on eating. Leave me alone. I know someone who did it until they were 100. Keep on doing. Are you them? Are they you? Stretch! You want to be the best? How many want to be the best here? From today, you are stretching into a new season. You are stretching into a new favor. You are stretching into testimony. And as you stretch, I command international doors to open for you. Global doors to open for you. National doors to open for you. Doors beyond where you live. Doors beyond where you are. Doors beyond your current location. In the name of Jesus. Doors that will wipe your tears. Doors that will fill your mouth with laughter. Doors that will give you reason to celebrate. They will open for you. Somebody scream, I'm stretching. Say it again, I'm stretching. Say it louder, I'm stretching. Put your hands together, give God a praise. And as you stretch, it shall be yours. I said, as you stretch, it shall be yours. That house will be yours. That ministry will be yours. That anointing will be yours. Household salvation will be yours. That dream car will be yours. That dream jaw will be yours. That door will open. Joy will flow. Fire of God will be on your life. Peace will be your portion. Somebody say, I'm stretching. Say it again, I'm stretching. Come on, say it louder, I'm stretching. 
despite the devil's lies I prophesy you will have it you will be blessed you will be lifted you will be victorious in the name of Jesus from today something is happened to you it is happening to you say I receive it I receive it I receive it Isaiah 54 verse 2 to 3 in the in the I think it is uh, if they can find 20th century New Testament fine if they can't use amplified in the Isaiah 54 verse 2 to 3 the Bible uses languages of stretching it says enlarge stretch the place of your dwelling it says words like lengthen the cord do not spare do not stay in some small place no not new King James go somewhere else please amplified or 20th century New Testament if you don't have that software tell us we'll buy it <laughs> praise the Lord in the amplified it says something to the fact enlarge the place of your tent somebody say stretch yes. say it again stretch yes. when I decided to build a small house for, for my family in Africa I decided I look all my life I've lived in tiny places you can't even pass through the door your wife has to give way before you can pass through even the rooms in England everything is like ah. no I've made up my mind no 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 I have to stretch man so when my friend Bishop Oedipo came visiting our house I was still going taking around and around and the, and the lift got him up to our penthouse when he entered my room he started speaking in tongues yes yeah, speak 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 brother speak speak brother speak Somebody says stretch. From today, God is enlarging your tent. The curtains of your habitation will be stretched down. You will not spare anymore. Your cords will be lengthened. I said your stakes will be lengthened. Shout amen with power. Give us verse 3. Give us verse 3. It says in the third verse, for you will spread out to the right. Say amen. And you will spread out to the left say amen your offspring will possess the nations oh come on somebody I'm stretching desolate cities will be inhabited by you come and say I'm stretching I'm stretching I'm stretching because the message of stretch this morning is not just for you alone it's for your family you need to stretch beyond today stretch beyond tomorrow stretch for your family stretch for your children stretch for the future stretch for destiny take over the things that you've lost take hold of ministry take hold of joy take your children back take the degree take the prosperity take your husband's salvation take your wife's salvation take your children back stretch for everything you've lost tradition will not stop you men will not stop you people will not stop you in the name of jesus i'm on somebody say i receive it and you're not too young you're not too old to stretch God wanted to stretch a man called Abraham. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. And God comes to the man and says, Hey, Abraham, from today I'm your friend. Get thee out of thy kindred and out of thy people to a land that I will show you. God was stretching him. When you are 75, you don't want to move anymore. You don't want to move. I mean, where again do you want to move? You don't want to begin to migrate at 75. So, but God said, if you stay here, you can't be what I want you to be. So God told him, get thee out of your country, number one. And then from your family. This is an uprooting. Then he said, from your father's house. You know, if you are, if you are raised in a very Western acculturated system, you don't understand this verse. In some countries, you are a member of a country. Then you are a member of a family. Then from that compound, there is a house. Then from the house, there is a clan. God was telling him, get out of all the systems because I'm about to stretch you. Abraham, you are carrying what will bless the world. You can't stay in this earth of the Chaldeans and be what I want you to be. And look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. Or of the Chaldeans was the New York of his time, the London of his time, the Paris of his time. Yet, God said, it's not big enough. Oh, some of you, you don't even know where God is taking you. 
God is taking you somewhere bigger, somewhere greater, somewhere better, better than you've ever known, better than you've ever seen. And I want you to know it's not too late. The day is coming. You will bless generation. You will bless the young. You will bless the old. You will bless your generation. You will bless your family. You will bless your children. Somebody scream, I'm stretching. Say it again, I'm stretching. Say it louder, I'm stretching. Or say it again, I'm stretching. From today, God will stretch you. Stretch your faith. Stretch your dream. Look at me, look at me. Some of you, you have nicely written goal. Today, we cancel that goal and give you a bigger one. Some of you, you have nice, beautiful vision. We cancel that vision, we give you a bigger one. Some of you, you are telling yourself, biology is not allowing me to be what I want to be. Ah! The power of resurrection will come into your life. We'll give you new destiny. We'll give you new purpose, new power, new capacity, new grace in the name of Jesus. Where they said you'll never reach, you will get there. What they said you'll never be, you will be. Shout amen three times. Now put your hands together, give God a praise. Oh, bless his name. Tell two people around you, I'm stretching. Say it again, I'm stretching. Say it like community, I'm stretching. Hallelujah, I'm stretching up. And I'm stretching sideways. Stretching downwards. Stretching on every side. I'm pressing on. New upward way. <laughs> New heights I'm gay. Need every day. Still praying us as I want one. <laughs> Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. A higher ground than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Tell your neighbor again, stretch, 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 stretch. Stretch, stretch, stretch. Stand on your feet and say, I'm stretching. Say like you mean it, I'm stretching. I'm stretching my faith. Stretching my vision. Stretching my dreams. I will never, never, never be the same. I will never, 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 never be the same. I will never, 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 never be the same. Never, never, never. Never, never, never. Yeah. Hey. Ah, somebody's stretching. I'm about to speak 30 prophetic words into your life. Are you ready to say amen? But you gotta be ready. Some stretchings are not easy. Tell your neighbor, speak broken English to them. Tell them, you know he's you. <laughs> You know he's you. Oh, oh, oh. But you are stretching. You are coming out of limitation. Pupa, lava. What's the next one? Help me now, doctors. I am only a pastor. You people should help me. Is it caterpillar before butterfly? Yes. Eh, I thought it was a cocoon. The cocoon. Eh, I was right now. You said caterpillar before. Okay, okay, okay. Somewhere, something happens. <laughs> I said, look at me, look at me, look at me. So this thing ends up in a cocoon, in a box. If you go and try to help it, you will damage it. It has to do the stretching itself. You gotta walk that lonesome valley. No one else can walk it for you. You gotta walk it all by yourself. So it's in this side, inside this cocoon. 
If he stays there too long, he will die. That's the reason many people's dream have died. So Pastor Matthew was sent to you this morning. Some of you have gone through various stages. And some of you have been, you felt discouraged. Don't be discouraged. Look at me. If some things delay, we don't understand. Your prayer can never be wasted. And your tears can never be wasted. I'm sure you've heard of uh, the estate we're building called Macarius. There was a time when for 10 years some of you wasted our time in court. I used to get angry. God, I fasted, fasted. Ah, I saw some dangerous seed man on Macarius so that this court thing would just end and I can sell. I didn't know that the delay was a blessing. At the time, we would have sold for peanuts what they call two million in the Nigerian currency. Today, what we are selling for 90. I didn't know that the delay was in order for the food to be properly cooked, for the preparation. I mean, that time I used to, why are we wasting this long time? It was suddenly that the whole area exploded and we even became the arrow point. They say, we are near Macarius. But at the time I was hoping I would sell, it was two. Now it is 90. Look at the difference. I was angry at two that God wasn't making this thing come to an end. I didn't know God was helping me to maximize my blessing. I was in a cocoon, but I didn't like the cocoon. But now somebody's coming out of the cocoon. Your delay is not a denial. Your being there for a long time is not a denial. And your prayer will not be wasted. Oh, come on, say amen powerfully. This morning, the hand of the Lord wipes your tears. The joy of the Lord becomes your strength. Laughter comes into your life. This next 30 prayers, I want your amen to be powerful. As the Lord stretches you from this morning, number one, you shall walk into happiness. Amen. Number two, healing and health. Amen. Three, peace like a river. Amen. Four, uncommon success. Amen. Five, abundant blessing. Amen. Six, power for daily living. Amen. Seven, prosperity beyond measure. Amen. Eight, breakthroughs. I said eight breakthroughs, nine favor from God and man, ten anointing that makes a difference, eleven divine intervention, say I receive it, twelve divine elevation, thirteen longevity of life, you will live long, you will live long, you will live long. 14 abundance follows you. 15 testimony in your house. Testimonies. 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 16 wealth and riches are coming to your house. 17 marital bliss will be your portion. Shout amen with fire. 18 amazing grace is yours. 19 divine protection will be a hedge around you. 20, breakthrough in life. You will break through. You will break through. 21, you will impact your generation. 22, you will make a difference. 23, you are breaking out of the mold. 24, you are breaking new grounds. You are entering new season. 25, 26, you are receiving divine protection on every side. In the name of Jesus, 27, God will be your father and mother. For the Bible says when your father forsakes you, the Lord will be your father. God will be your nearest father. He will be there for you. In the name of Jesus, 28, the spirit of excellence shall rest on your life. 29, every sacrifice 
that you have placed on the altar, sacrificial offering, sacrificial prayer, sacrificial praise, shall not go in vain. It shall not go in vain. And number 30, today I declare into your life, Mabusuni Pranishkai Taruna Bruzi, you are crossing impossible lines. 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 Shout amen powerfully. Give God a praise. Give God a praise. Give God a praise. Give God a praise. Give God a praise this morning. Tell yourself, I'm stretching. I'm stretching. I'm stretching on every side. I'm stretching my faith. Stretching my prayer. Stretching my dreams. I'm stretching on every side. I will never be the same. I will never, never, never be the same. I'm stretching. I'm stretching. 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 Father, we seal today's message and we seal today's service with breakthroughs to follow your people. Out of this morning service, come back with testimonies. Come back with testimony. You have stretched from today. Some of you are going to take initiative. You are going to do new things. I declare the new things will work. The doors you've been knocking will open. In the place where they said no to you, they will say yes. The place where they denied you, they will accept you. The place where they shut the door in your face, they will open the door for you. God will give you a new testimony. In the name of Jesus, if you have to walk the lonesome valley, it shall result in testimony. It shall result in glory, in breakthrough, in turnaround, in joy. So shall it be. In Jesus' name. To the level that you feel free and blessed, give God praise this morning. And from today, when people see you doing things, say, you never used to do this, so you tell them, I'm stretching. Some people will always want you to go back the way you used to be. Tell them, I'm stretching. One of the, you can't believe it. Sometimes family are the ones who don't let you to be healed. When God is, when God is healing you or you are coming out of sin, say, don't move too much, don't move too much. Be, 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 be very careful, be very careful. Hey, stretch. Somebody say, I'm stretching. Somebody always, some people will look for you in the old address. But on this altar, I stand. They will not find you in the old address. You are relocating. Relocation to your allocation. Relocation to your allocation. Relocation to your allocation. In the name of Jesus, a relocation to your allocation. In Jesus' name. Give God praise. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Stretch. Stretch. Don't let anything hold you. When I, got to, when I, got, when I was going to go speak in Kigali, I went with so much trepidation because normally somebody has to write me for six months to one year before I accept to come and speak. But this person wrote me three months. So we send them this prim engagement form. We say, okay, how many people will be there? And the lady said 10,000. I'm thinking, hmm. I hope they are not speaking evangelistically. Even went online, couldn't see much about the ministry. Gave them some conditions. They met it. Oh, okay, let's go and see. Never met the woman and her husband before, until I landed in Kigali. When I entered the hall, I was blown away. Her husband is not into ministry, but she has a calling. She did not let the fact that her husband is not in the ministry stop her from stretching. She has not seen anything like what she's doing, but she stretched. Apparently, she's been going on the internet and eating everything I've ever taught, drinking everything I've ever taught. I mean, 
Apparently, she, she's visited us as a member sitting in a corner in Waterden Road. Because her sister-in-law used to worship with us. So she'll come, she'll sit down in Waterden Road. And now God has so blessed her ministry. Women came from 40 nations. The stadium was too small. There is something you are carrying. Stretch for it. After this morning, you will never go back to yesterday. Somebody bless the Lord. Please be seated. Please be seated. <clears throat> never go back to yesterday. I'm going to serve the Lord this morning. Even in our seat, so and look at me. It's another area. Some people just... They have become religious in the way they serve God with their offering, with their giving. They have a regular way they think of sowing seed. You've got to learn how to break out of mold and be a dangerous seed sower to experience dangerous favors and blessings. Every January 1, as I enter the new year, I take 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 2 which says every first day of the week, you should set aside what you will give. So every first, every first of January, I, I change my offering every year because I want God to change my blessings every year. Praise God. So this morning, stretch in your worship with, with your tithe. Stretch in your giving with your offering. Don't be among those who are busy debating. Stretch. Be one of those who serve the Lord with that which he has provided for you. 